Hello Scouts, uh, we're going to do a video here showing you a couple of things using map and compass together and we're going to focus on first orienting the map and then taking a bearing between two points and we're going to show you two different techniques for that one with the map oriented and then the second technique when the map is not oriented so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to orient our map which means we're going to make sure that the map and the compass are both facing up to magnetic north and for the purpose of this video uh, magnetic north and true north are going to be one and the same so the first thing that we do in order to do that is we're going to take our compass with a base plate and we're going to turn uh, and set the zero degree uh, setting of true north here at the at the top where you would read your your heading and that also happens to be where the uh, orienteering vial or the uh, degree dial whatever you would like to call that uh, comes into intersection with the direction of travel arrow so we'll set that for zero or 360 degrees and then we're going to place that on the map and we're going to place that on the map uh, in a very uh, one of many specific locations if your map has these vertical grid lines we're going to go ahead and line up any of the side edges of your base plate with the grid line so we could we can line up this side we could line up this side it doesn't make a difference if you're working on a map that has no grid lines then what you can do is you can line up the edge of your compass base plate with the edge of the map border so you can do that either on the end or if you want it even across this nice flat surface here you could line it up across the top of top of the map that way uh, note that the top of the maps are always written with the tops north so we know that this is north because we can read everything this is the right side up so however we've gone ahead and laid out our, our compass on this map what we're then going to do is we're going to turn the entire map and compass together until the red magnetic needle lines up with the orienteering red arrow here in our uh, in our in our vial or in the uh, the compass housing uh, there's so many different names for this and people refer to them as different ways and then one of the ways that people uh, especially within scouting will refer to getting this condition right here is we call the magnetic needle red Fred and we call the orienteering arrow his shed so we put red Fred in the shed now by doing this we now know that this map is properly oriented so that north is actually north uh, we verify that through our compass now we will hold the, the map steady this is now what's called an oriented map it's properly oriented to the north now what if we wanted to take a bearing between uh, two locations a starting point and a destination for example so what if we were to say that we were going to go from uh, this man-made structure to this man-made structure well with an oriented map this is the easiest thing to do um, and this is also great if you're doing like an exercise where you're going to take multiple bearings but from one location to another or to another to another because as long as you keep the map oriented look how fast we can do this by putting the edge of your base plate at your starting location there's your destination that will be your direction of travel and that's important to know because here's your direction of travel arrow so you definitely want to have your compass in like this not like that because that is the direction of travel arrow and that is the opposite of where you want to be so from this man-made structure to that man-made structure with the direction of travel arrow in the right direction all we simply need to do to get a bearing is hold the base plate and the map still rotate the vial until red shed uh, red Fred is in the shed alright and that's it at this point you can now lift the base plate and the compass off the map you read where the direction of arrow, uh, direction of travel arrow comes down and intersects your degree dial, and we see that we're around 282, maybe 284 degrees. So that's the easiest way to do a bearing. And then, if you wanted to travel in that direction, you would hold this out in front of you, nice and flat, turn your entire body 
until Red, shed, Red Fred is in the shed and you'll know that that is the direction of travel for your hiking and your, and your movements. All right, so if you're standing at this location, that's how you would go. So now we're going to get a little trickier. What happens if your map is no longer oriented? So this is now representing north, but magnetically, north is still in that direction. And you want it to take the same bearing, starting point and destination. Now, in order to do that, because we can no longer rely on the magnetic needle to help us, we're going to rely on these grid lines. Right? And we're going to marry those grid lines to the orienteering lines that are on your compass. Now, in this particular compass, the grid lines are on my number dial, my, uh, my degree dial. On a lot of scout compasses, there's red lines throughout the vial here. So it doesn't really matter, all of these lines are in parallel, so you can use any one of those red lines and line them up. So we have a starting point and a destination point, same direction of travel, still take the edge of your compass and line them up. Now, you'll notice that I'm using my fingers here as an example of, of showing you how the compass base plate can be slid back and forth as it doesn't matter as long as the edge of the base plate is still connecting your two points of travel you can slide this back and forth and the reason that I'm showing you this is to get the, f the best reading you want to move your base plate and your vial, vial or dial to the point where you can best line up the orienteering lines on your de uh, degree dial with the grid lines of the map and if you have them in a straight line and they're lined up or oriented with each other you're still going to come up and with about 284 degrees just like we did with the second method or the first method alright so a review oriented the map so that north is north so the map north Magnetic north, the direction of travel north, all line up. And then we can go ahead and take bearings based upon an oriented map simply by rotating the dial and putting the magnetic arrow within the orienteering arrow. And then we had the second methodology where on a non oriented map you could still take two bearings as long as you were taking into consideration alignment between your orienteering lines and the grid lines of your map. And again, and any time when you do that, remember north is at the top. So when we were doing this exercise and we were moving these grid we were rotating this vial to line the lines up. Notice that north is at the top. We could have easily lined up the lines this way as well. But north is at the bottom and we'd be 180 degrees off. North is always the top of the map. Okay? Thank you.